remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And you know, there's a uh, challenge that some of us uh, conservatives have, a weakness that we conservatives have sometimes that I've seen. And it's a weakness that once in a while we'll hear a Democrat, we'll hear a liberal say something so asinine, so off the wall, and, and so comical almost, that we really don't dignify it with a response. We just think in the back of our head, oh man, that, that, that was bizarre, that was hilarious. Everybody will see through that, and we don't bother to actually dispute what they're saying because we think it's just so obvious to everybody that they'll pick it up on their own. But that comes back to bite us sometimes. I mean, you look back at the uh, war on women deal when we were accused of, of trying to ban birth control, and we all thought, oh, come on, that's not what we're doing. Who would, ever, who would ever believe that? Well, as it turned out, a lot of people believed it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not just pointing the finger at, at other conservatives when I say that. I, I'm pointing the finger of blame at myself. I have been known to do this from time to time. I have seen liberals say things, and I don't in a million years think anybody would ever actually take them seriously. That I, I almost think it, it, it's, a, it's a guffaw, that it's, a, it's putting your foot in their mouth. and that it, it, Almost a mistake. But yet some of these things actually pick up traction. Well, I think earlier in the week we ran into one of these situations. Uh, Barack Obama was over speaking at the National Action Network. That's uh, Al Sharpton's little, little gang of folks that he hangs out with. He was giving a speech over there. And he said something that literally made me laugh the first time I heard it. I thought it was so asinine no one would ever believe it. But learning from history, maybe as asinine as it is, maybe we actually have to address it. So here is Barack Obama speaking at Al Sharpton's little party. But the stark, simple truth is this. The right to vote is threatened today in a way that it has not been since the Voting Rights Act became law nearly five decades ago. Across the country, Republicans have led efforts to pass laws making it harder, not easier, for people to vote. So that's it. We Republicans are making it harder for people to vote. Oh, please. Okay, now, at the risk of patronizing some of you, I know I shouldn't have to explain this. It is as obvious as the nose on your face. It's as obvious as the sky is blue. But in case there are people out there that don't get this, I'm going to try to explain it to you. To those of you who already get it, bear with me. I think you'll enjoy the ride. Okay. And before I explain this, those of you who are listening to me right now, I want you to just for a moment set all of your political ideologies aside, your party affiliation aside. If you love Barack Obama, set that aside. If you're like me and you hate Barack Obama, set it to the side. Put all that to the side just for a moment. I would expect that most everybody in this audience has voted at some point, okay? You, you probably have voted. I know I have. Most of you have probably voted. Now, I want you to think back to the times you voted. All those times you voted, was it a terribly difficult experience? What Was it hard to do? What Was it terribly complicated when compared to the other tasks that you go through in daily life? Well, if you're being honest, you would answer that question with a pretty clear no. Voting really is not all that hard, even, even under the current laws. Yeah, you go and register to vote. You prove you're an American citizen, which is not that hard to do. You get your little voter ID card, you go to the, the poll, and in theory, you give them a you give them an ID, or in some cases, like a, a light bill or water bill. I can't imagine they accept those, but they do. It's not hard to vote, okay? And so I gotta ask the question, where's the onslaught of American citizens who are coming out and saying, you know, I would have voted in the last election, but, but it was just too hard. I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Now, if if... If wanting to make it so easy to vote were such a priority, or if it should be such a priority, I would think we would be seeing thousands of people coming out of the woodwork saying, yeah, I wanted to vote and I couldn't because I, I couldn't figure it out. I, 
I, I got to the polls. I didn't know what to do. I, you know, I, I, the, the, the whole voting machine thing, it, 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 it confused me to hell. You never see that. You never hear people say, ah, it's just too hard to vote, so I stayed home. You'll hear people say, I didn't like the candidate, so I stayed home. You'll hear any number of other things, but you never hear people say, it's too hard. So on that basis, it seems to me that making ease of voting a higher, a higher priority than security of voting is a pretty asinine idea. I mean, it kind of goes without saying, I would think. I mean, you don't ever hear anybody say it's too hard to vote. Well, except people who aren't legally able to vote, but why should we care about them? Okay, so people can vote. It's not real hard. But yet, we live in an era where identity fraud is rampant. We live in an era where your personal information is, is at a premium, where it's actually extremely valuable to criminals. I mean, we see every day issues of identity fraud and identity theft and those kind of things and how profitable it is for people uh, outside of the political world. Why wouldn't it be just as, as profitable for people inside the political world? And I know Democrats and Obama and so forth will always say, well, there's, 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 not, a, there's not any confirmed case, or very few confirmed cases of voter fraud. Well, why do you think that is? Have you, you remember when you go to the polls? Remember I asked you earlier to remember the last time you voted? Remember when you go to the polls? Who do you see working the polls? You see volunteers, a lot of them senior citizens, volunteering for the day, giving up their time. So guess what? They're unlikely, even when they have a suspicion, they're unlikely to really put the balls to the wall and stop you from voting. I mean, it's gonna have to be the most egregious cases for them to say anything. Usually they'll let you go on by and let you do your thing. You know, rather than cause a big scene. You know, so to say that, to say that, well, there's just not, just not a high number of cases of voter fraud, so we don't need to worry about it, seems to me like saying, you know, I live in a residential neighborhood, and there's people that, that run up and down the street real fast in their cars, uh, you know, going 50, 60 miles an hour down this residential street, and I never see cops out here to patrol it. Well, what if I went to the police and say, hey, you know, it's a 35 mile an hour speed zone in, in my street. People are going by at 60 miles an hour. Could you patrol out here? And if they said to me, well, we won't patrol because there haven't been that many tickets issued out there. Well, no, there haven't been tickets issued because you haven't patrolled it. Now, I want you to think about something for a second. We remember all the stuff that happened over the Christmas holidays at Target with their identity theft kind of stuff going on and people getting a hold of those of, of the personal information and making charges on accounts and so forth. It was a bad, bad deal. Could you imagine if any retailer, and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying Target did this, I'm saying any retailer, now that this is all in the forefront of our minds, could you imagine if any retailer, when asked about what their policies are for protecting customer information and, and customer identity and so forth, if they were to say, well, you know, I know that other stores have policies in place to deal with that, but you know, really at, at our establishment here, we haven't really seen that come up. We haven't really ever had a situation where our customers' identity were compromised. So we don't put any security uh, security factors around that. We, we, we don't focus on that. We don't worry about it because it's never happened. So there's no reason for us to. How asinine would that be? Would you ever shop there again? Of course you would. Now, some say that voter ID laws, just the mere idea of producing a driver's license or a government issued ID when you vote. Some people say that that negatively affects minorities. Okay, I got one question for you. How? How does that negatively affect minorities? Are there places in this country where minorities are not allowed to get driver's license or not allowed to get state IDs? Does that actually happen? Is there a scandal out there that I don't know about where minorities are being denied driver's licenses? Is there some sort of big scandal out there that I don't know about where there's Jim Crow laws that license, uh, license bureaus? Are there license bureaus anywhere in this nation where you see a sign up that says whites only? I've never heard of any of this. Come on. A minority could get a driver's license or an ID just like anybody else can. Same rules apply. There's nothing discriminatory about it, and requiring voter IDs would not discriminate against minorities. How I wish someone would produce a number for me. Some of you people on the left that are so hell-bent on, on keeping IDs out of elections. I wish you would produce a number for me that shows me 
How many people out there, how many minorities out there, what percentage of the minority community out there either does not have a driver's license or ID and cannot get one? That number's got to be small. I cannot imagine that, it, that it's a high number. I mean, e e I know that, yeah, there's people who live in the inner cities that, that may not drive. I understand that. But is it really that tough to get a state-issued ID? I mean, what do they cost? Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20? I mean, I don't know, it varies by state to state, I'm sure. But it's not like it's gonna cost you hundreds of dollars. It's not like someone's gonna check your credit or ask you for references or any of this other crap. It's an easy process. It's a pretty inexpensive one. In fact, those that say it would be the impoverished and the minorities that would be affected by this and they wouldn't be allowed to vote, I'm going to tell you something. I grew up in a, in a rather poor part of the state of Missouri, rather impoverished area, rural area. And as rural as it was, as impoverished as it was, even the poorest of the poor people I knew had driver's licenses. Now, in a rural area, that's somewhat necessary because you have to be able to drive or have access to a vehicle to go grocery shopping or go to Walmart and get your, your basic needs or whatever. So yeah, there's a need for that. But I cannot imagine that there's a significant percentage of people in the cities that don't have driver's licenses either. It's not hard to get. It's not cost prohibitive to get. In closing, this is all smokescreen, and you and I both know it. Now, the cynic would say, the cynic would say that the Democrats are against voter IDs and against strengthening just the, the enforcement of the laws we already have. I mean, we, we conservatives are not asking to change the requirements for voting. I mean, I could suggest a couple of things, but we're not going there. All we're saying is, hey, let's just make sure the people voting are, are adherent to the laws that are already there. But a lot of people on the left don't like that. And the cynic would say they don't like it because they want to be able to pull some chicanery. They want to have some illegal aliens voting. They want dead people to vote, which has happened in Chicago. So there actually are cases of voter fraud out there. The cynic would say that. But even if you're not a cynic, even if you're not a cynic, even if you don't think those things currently happen, if you're an intelligent person at all, if you're just an observant person around the world around you, you would have to believe that with all of the problems with identity theft today and, and with people stealing identities and stealing personal information, that voting would be a rather attractive target that the polls would be a rather attractive par target for any political party, any political group, to gain a foothold. Hey, I'll admit that the first people I would think of that would take advantage of this would be Democrats, but I got news for you. If it was game on and everybody can vote as easy as they want to, and you could have voting on the internet, no IDs, and all this crap, I guarantee at some point a Republican would try to take advantage of it too. It's not right either way, folks. All we're asking is for a very basic, very simple ID, a driver's license, a state-issued ID, just to prove that you are who you say you are. You gotta have that to get into practically any government building, but you don't have to have it to vote? Doesn't make sense at all. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.